All right, so why are we here? We are here to listen to the finding of this awesome right um, researcher, educator, and um, lecturer. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you our speaker of the hour. She is a lecturer of nursing and midwifery at the prestigious Amadou, I hope I'm pronouncing these words correctly, Bella University, Aria, Nigeria. She is an international awardee to the Cardiff University in UK, where she completed her terminal degree focusing on workforce, midwifery workforce. She is no stranger to VIDM, having a, been a presenter and a facilitator here also. She has written, published, and presented at national and international conferences. Today, she will be speaking to us on the burden Nigerian men experience of traumatic birth. I speak none other than Alima <laughs> Abdul, Dr. Alima Abdul. So help me welcome her as she bring to us her findings. <clears throat> Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Arima. Thank you very much, Dr. Cynthia, for having me. And thank you, everyone. And when called to the Virtual International Day of the Midwife. My You're topic welcome. of discussion... My topic of discussion for today is men's experiences of attending a traumatic birth in hospitals in Nigeria by me, myself, and then my other co-authors are there, Balari B. Fatima, Abubakar Isa, and Ahmed Rufai, all from High Profile University in Nigeria. By way of introduction and background, evidence suggests that the negative impact of traumatic birth on affected individual, it's so overwhelming and has led to research focus on this area. Existing literature has looked into women's experiences. There's lots of literature of women experiences of traumatic birth in both high income countries and low and middle income countries. Also, we also have literatures that have looked about normal birth experiences of what women Men and men in many of this country. However, with the Nigerian high level of maternal and neonatal mortality rates, nothing is known about men's experiences following the traumatic clinical events. By way of introduction, still on the matter, defining traumatic birth, the word, the term traumatic birth is an emerging, is an, is, is an emerging area in midwifery. The term traumatic have, have been used in midwifery in a variety of ways. So describing traumatic birth experiences or the characteristics of traumatic birth experiences in other people, in other, other people other than the women is a bit difficult. However, a recent systematic review in 2016 by Greenfield described the traumatic birth, defined traumatic birth as the emergence of baby from its mother in a way that involved events or care that caused deep distress or psychological disturbance disturbances which may or may not involve physical injury but resulting in psychological distress of an enduring nature. This is by Greenfield. Still on the matter, White 2007 writes that for a man, the scenario can become vivid, colorful, noisy and dramatic and he may respond with intense fear, helplessness and horror. This tells us that traumatic Bad experience don't do not only have an overwhelming effect on the women but also on the men. 
but there's need for us to explore what are the experiences of, of this man about this traumatic clinical part event for us to categorically say this is how it looks like on the phenomenon. This is how they experience the, the phenomenon. Now, the operational definition of this term in the context of this study meant attendance in this study means physical presence of a man or its partner, physical presence of a man or partner while supporting his spouse during a hospital childbirth. Now, men's attendance in other study may mean for the man to be a pet companion for his spouse while she's in labor, but in our own setting, because of issues like privacy issues, men are usually not allowed into the batting environment because of issues of lots of women around with no spaces for privacy. So men may not be bad companion from their wife, but they could be physically physically present during childbirth, but may not be at the bedside of their wife. So traumatic birth in the context of this study is a childbirth experience or event which created fear or psychological distress for the man who may not necessarily be a bad companion. Now, where is Nigeria? For those of us that don't know where Nigeria is, Nigeria is situated in West Africa. We have a population of over 211 million, which is literally over the, much more than the population of Eastern Europe. We have a maternal mortality of about 512 per 100,000 live births and neonatal and infant mortality rates of 39 and 67 per 1,000 live births respectively. From the, this is from the National Demographic Health Survey 2018. The religion of the Nigerian are predominantly Christians and Muslim. Still on the introduction, in Nigeria, like I've said earlier, Men are, men are more likely to be present at their childbirth, but not necessarily as bad companions, because men are not allowed as bad companions due to lack of privacy issues in most labor wards in Nigeria. If that birth becomes traumatic, they may appear uninformed due to communication issues, as well as other factors that have been talked about by other studies. So these men may potentially be helpless. It may be so overwhelming for them, so they may become helpless with increased anxiety. It may affect their mental health and that of the mother by extension, which may result to poor bonding and transition to parenthood. And we all know mental health of the mother is very, very important for the proper, the, for, for proper nourishing and taking care of the baby at the neonatal period or to the infanthood. Therefore, exploring, exploring men's experiences of a traumatic clinical event becomes important. The objective of this paper is to explore men's experiences of spousal labor and childbirth that was traumatic for them and to further explore the support system they got during their experience and also look into the coping strategies that help them survive and thrive at that period. Now into the methodology and methods. The research design was qualitative research. Why? Because we want to find rich and deep information about their experiences so that we could better inform, we could, inf we could, we could, we could inform knowledge and also guide midwives on how to support them. Phenomenological approach was used. Why? Because the life experiences of these men are, were, were, was desired to be explored. The population of study were men who has experienced traumatic clinical events within the last 10 years. Why? Because we believe that those that have experienced within 10 years will be able to tell us, give us more, and the memories may likely be, may, may likely be still close to their heart for them to share with us. And that was why we decided to look at that. And then from other studies, we also found out that most studies also looked at in other countries look at men's experience within 10 years so as to inform the, uh, to get rich information from this men. Recruitment. Now, 
this study was thought was planned right from last year around February. We tried to recruit from the labor ward of some of the tertiary hospital and a particular tertiary hospital where the where the authors reside. But at first, it was difficult to get this bin. So we resorted to advertise on social media, different WhatsApp group, and then we were able to get to pull up around 14 participants. They agreed to participate in this study initially. So purposive sampling was used because, of course, we need people that we believe will have rich information or that have experience regarding this, 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 this the, the phenomenon on the study. I said earlier that we had a total population of 14, but when we started data collection, we realized that some of them, their experiences were over 10 years, and then they, they let us know that it's not, the, the, the part was not really traumatic for them. And then finally, we came down with a sample size of seven. That was not only the reason. I will talk about why we arrived at the sample size of seven as well. Ethical approval was sought from the ethical review board of a tertiary hospital where the study was conducted, which was all granted. Method of data collection, interviews was conducted, face-to-face -face interview was conducted. We decided to choose a particular location in one of the tertiary hospital. The participants that agreed to participate for the study contacted us and then we all agreed on the day to meet. So we had an office where the, we had the face-to-face -face interview in one of the tertiary hospitals. So we overall, we interviewed six participants face-to-face -face, and the seven participants were struggling to come back due, due to come down to where we are due to security challenges. And then we decided to have the interview on Skype. Now, before we do this, we need to rewrite another ethical approval because that was not part of the initial plan. So we had to do that. And then we got another ethical approval for that. And then we had one interview on Skype. So after the seven interviews, we realized that we have achieved data saturation. And because we achieve, as soon as we, we realized we've achieved data saturation, we decided to terminate the data collection and begin the process of data analysis. Now the data analysis. For data analysis, initially, we wanted to use the interpretative phenomenological approach. The IPA is a qualitative analysis approach that aims to provide detailed examination of individual lived experience. However, IPA tends to analyze individual cases in greater depth before attempting any integration between cases. Now, due to lack of research on men's traumatic experiences, we decided that a more specific focus on patterns across participants are very important. So we resolved to use thematic analysis. So the Brown and Clark thematic analysis was employed and then the six steps were used. The six steps which in, involve, of course, you have to do transcribing first we did, with reading and familiariz familiarization of the code, the transcript. We started coding and then we searched for teams. We review the teams, we define and name the teams. And finally, we write, we wrote the, the, the analysis. Involvo 12 was used to support our data analysis because we have the in some of the interview lasted for about one to 30 minutes and then we we had a lot of data so we thought using in vivo would be nice to support the huge amount of data we had even though it was from seven participants exclusion criteria was traumatic experience over 10 years and those persons that felt the experiences were not actually traumatic for them now in the hospital we involved because it's a traumatic, we're trying to explore men's traumatic experiences. We try to inform the psych psychologists that this is what we'll be doing. And then we'll be giving the contact number, their contact numbers to the men to contact them for those persons that felt emotional at the time of data collection. So we refer them to them for, 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 for further debriefing and, and counseling.
your slide 24. So rigor in qualitative research to maintain credibility and then to take care of subjectivity associated with qualitative research. And we try to look at the trustworthiness of our findings for credibility of current data analysis was done. I would say when we collected the first transcript, we started transcribing immediately. And as we're doing that, we try to look out for codes and then refine some of them. And then we did triangulation. We use field notes that, so that uh, gestures, nonverbal communications, why we took some decisions. And then we try to make sure we, 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 we try to take care of our, we, don't, we, we didn't want our professional experience to interfere with the quality of the data we are correcting, we, we're collecting. So we tried as much as, much as possible to write down every action we, we, we did. So we did lots of feed notes writing, and then we wrote a lot of memos. Also, we did a member check-in just to ensure credibility. Then, like I said earlier, we terminate data correct collection as soon as we realize we've achieved data saturation. Now for depend dependability and confirmability, peer depriving by co-authors, and then we try as much as possible to remain reflexive by opening re reflexive journals. We wrote every decision we took, each of each and every one of the author took notes of that, wrote everything regarding to this, so as not to interfere with the, the quality of our data. Now the results, men were recruited, were all from Northwestern Nigeria, which is where we resided. Bet experience, we were mainly in tertiary health institution, institutions. They were all willing to share their experiences. Traumatic birth experiences of this men were between two to five years. Still on the result matter. So following our thematic analysis, we are able to came up with we came up with three teams. This is I, I would like to say this is a preliminary findings because data analysis is still ongoing. This is the preliminary findings which we decide to present at these conferences at this conference. And then the team one is experiences of trauma, and then we have. Some of the codes there being ignored and lost. This is one of the sub teams from the analysis loss of control, negative attitude of staff, where some of the experiences of the trauma, difficult relationship with staff was part of the, the experiences of the trauma. On team two, we looked at impact on men's well being. And some of the codes there, we have having sleep disturbances. They were depressed and at their wit ends. There's feeling of guilt and being responsible. And then there's fear, which there was fear with subsequent pregnancy. Then team three looked at how this men survived this phenomenon. What are those factors that, that, that helped them to, to deal with it at that period? And then it was spirituality and faith was found to be very useful to the men from their, from their, from their discussion. Psychological support from staff was very, very important. Then social support from both their colleagues and support from the family we are believed to be therapeutic to them. And I'm going to go through some of the excerpts which I which we use verbatim from our, which we which, which we got from the transcription and directly into this slide. Now still on the results, the first one being ignored and lost. When we arrived at the hospital, this is one of the father. Initially, we decided to use pseudonyms, but at this stage, we now decided to refer to them as father one, father two, father three, father four, father five, father six, father seven. When we arrived at the hospital, this is from father one. He said the nurses just ignored me and left me outside the ward. They kept on coming out, telling me to just go and get this. The three dots here are some words that we try to reduce just to allow space for, for the presentation and then for the slide. I was just left alone and lost. I was left, I was just left alone and lost, not knowing what is going on. No one was saying anything to me. Then from the third father, my wife 
loss and expensive pregnancy from IVF, IVF, which is in vitro fertilization, four years now. You can imagine that no one cared about me. Attention was all on my wife. I was severely traumatized. I kept asking, is there a problem? No one called me went wrong. I just stood outside the world alone. There is a sense of being left alone and then the men feel the men felt that they've been ignored ignored and that actually impacted on their experiences and then this has also been reported by many other studies where men many of the men described like in the in, in, in a study in in the united kingdom where the men were described as being viewed as mere passengers they were not part and parcel of of the whole uh, bad process of their wife, which made them fit, which even increased to their feeling of psychological distress. Then, still on it, loss of control, still on the experience of the trauma. One of the men said, That's father, too. As I brought my wife in, I was told to go out of the labor ward. That was all. My wife was just there, alone in pain with her first baby. I could hear her screaming in pain. I wish I could sit by her, but I had no control of what was happening and then i was told she would go in for cesarean section it was all so fast this way this was typical of many of the fathers that they were they 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 they, 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 they were not in control of all the happenings all the the, the batting process for their wife which also affected or traumatized them as well now still on the matter the attitude of the staff were there was a sense there was a sense of the attitude of the staff being viewed as negative because some of, many of the participants talked about of talked about not being supported as much as they want and then here is some few experts from one of the fathers my wife was convulsing i was brought to the hospital the nurse ignored me as if it was not a tough case she just wouldn't listen as she kept pointing at somebody to see us Another father said, the nurse kept yelling at me to go and pay for my wife's bills and get blood for transfusion and all sorts. She wouldn't explain anything and then finally I lost my baby. It was sad. Still on the relationship with staff, even this is another another uh, uh, quote that talked about difficult relationship with staff. And then one of the fathers said, even, after, even when after I lost my baby, the nurses would not allow me in to see my wife, even when she was alone. I pleaded, but they refused, but allowed someone in earlier when we arrived to see his wife. The staff were all busy and never cared about the relative. They just came out, yelled at us, and then asked one of us to go get some things to use on the woman. And that's all. They were not friendly at all. This is from Father Tree. All this creates a all this shows create a sense of difficult relationship with the member of staff, which impacted on their which impacted on their experiences. Now, team two, which is impact on their well-being. Father two talked about father two and father seven talked about impacting on their sleep disturbance, having sleep disturbances after the experience. After the loss of my baby, I couldn't sleep for almost three months. It was so difficult as I kept having flashback into the incident and how my wife suffered with carrying that pregnancy. And then Father Seven talked about after my wife had a prolonged labor, she ended up with an operation to bring the baby out. She went through a lot. That night, my heart was troubled and I couldn't sleep for many weeks. Seal on team two. Many of the, the, the fathers talked about being depressed and at their wit ends. And one of them talked about after my wife lost her baby, which we had from IVF, I was withdrawn, not talking to anyone. I became depressed. I didn't know what to do because everyone feels we should just be okay as a man. This is from Father too. And then I can't forget that experience. My wife bled and bled and nearly died. Even after the childbirth, I was still scared. I was completely at my wit end. I would have lost her. It was really traumatizing, honestly. I became withdrawn a bit after the incident. Feeling of guilt and being responsible. After I lost my baby, I felt guilty. This is still on the impact on their well-being, as if I was responsible for the loss. For the loss. That aspect affected me so much each time I tried to recollect. 
And then I nearly lost my wife from convulsion with her first baby. I still feel bad because I feel I'm responsible because of my delay in taking her to see the health worker. It was totally my fault. All these were believed to have a sense of impact on their well-being. Still on team two, which is still impact on their well-being, there was fear with subsequent pregnancy and childbirth. One of the father talked about, after the first difficult experience, I suffer anxiety each time my wife comes down pregnant and it's even worse when she starts labor. And then another father said, it's difficult to forget the experience, especially if what you went through was very, very tough. Kai, Kai is, is, is like, is a, is a dialect here yeah, for where I stay, a house, meaning emphasis on how hard the situation was. And that was why I put it in square bracket. With the last pregnancy, my heart was always pounding when I get a phone call. And at times at night, it, it becomes hard to fall asleep due to fear that something might happen or she may start another conversion again. That's, that's from Father Seven. Now the, the team three, the team three is how they survive, what helped them to deal with the situation at that time. And the first one was spirituality and faith. Spirituality and faith was believed to support the father from our interaction. And one of the one, one of the father talked about, I'm grateful to God, my Lord. He gave me strength to cope at that time and up till now. As a, that's the father one. Then with my wife still conversing then, I cannot see her. I just kept praying to God for her life and his grace and my God helped me. And then still on it, after I lost my baby, I depended on God as I believe he would give me another one. And I was so glad God gave me another child. I would have said my faith in God really helped me survive that trauma because it was a tough period for us. That's from Father 2. Still on the results, psychological support from staff was also identified as a source of, which is not surprising, that has been documented by other studies as as, as well when the incident occurred there was a particular nurse that was so nice and polite she approached me and explained everything to me honestly i was calm afterward her words are kind and very soothing that's from father four even though i felt bad the midwife explained the cause of death and kind of gave a psychological support and what i need to do is help me to, a lot to get over it that's from father two and social support my family were so useful for me and they were around me to help me, to help my wife after she had the operation. We were never left alone. And then still on the matter, my mom stayed with us for a while to support my wife and that helped us to cope generally. Now, conclusion, findings show that a complicated childbirth experience have an overwhelming effect on the man, especially if it was traumatic to them. Building rapport with men and being informed by a midwife, you can see from the results, and other health professionals appears to cushion the impact of birth complications. Faith, I would like to say, faith was one of the original contribution of this study to knowledge. Why? Because earlier studies that I've looked, up, looked on never mentioned spirituality or faith. This may not be surprising in this area. Why? Because majority of the participants were predominantly Christian of Christian and Muslim religion, which may explain the reasons for their coping, as mentioned by some of the fathers. And then from the from scripture from scriptural perspective, it is believed that believe in God, the Christian believe in God for strength, and then from for the on the part of the Muslims, the Muslim believe on what we call Qadr al that is believe in faith for whatever whatever befell anybody, and that was a source of strength and comfort, and the God's providence was a strength of resilience for these participants. Recommendation, mind you, I would like to say this is still the preliminary report from some of our initial findings. Education about the women's condition should be provided to men at every point of childbirth services. You will agree with me. Applying good communication skills to the practice of midwifery and respectful maternity care should be encouraged at all levels. Midwives in contact with fathers should provide support and also provide a mechanism for the discussion of men's mental health. Because some of these men were dealing with this issue. They didn't know the 
they need to report to psychiatrists or other member of the team for psychological support. Supporting men at this crucial period, you agree with me, is also supporting the entire family for a positive transition to parenthood. I would like to say finally, thank you all for your complete attention.